Okay, it's after the break, and we're coming back to finish the problem set. Um, I think we finished 28 last time. Now we're on to 29, and 29 is about simplifying an algebraic uh, expression here. So I have um, two sets of grouping symbols. We're going to remove those, and uh, just one at a time. So let's put this down. So it's going to be minus 4t squared plus 3t minus 6. Now the second grouping symbol, what I do is subtract each of those terms. So minus t squared, minus 5t, and minus and minus 1 is plus 1. Then I'm going to combine like terms. I'm going to do the squares first. So I see this, and I see this. Now it will be minus 5 of those things, and they're t squareds. And then I see this, and I see this. 3 minus 5 is minus 2 of those things, and those things are t's. Now the constant, minus 6 plus 1, is minus 5. Again, answers are being provided for you to self-assess, see how you're doing. We're doing fine. This one over here, again, it's, I have to simplify it. How do I do that? I've got to remove the grouping symbols. And the way to do that is by the distributive property multiplication. So I'm going to do the first, and then I'll do the second. And what do you get over there? Well, 5 times 3 is 15. So it's 15t, and then minus 10w. Next up, what do I get? 2t, because uh, 2 times t is 2t. And then 2 times 4w is 8w. Like terms, well, 15t and 2t is 17t. <coughs> Excuse me, minus 10w plus 8w is going to be minus 2w. Again, I can't say this time. Mistakes happen. That's why you want to definitely look at the answer key, see how you're doing. This one's a multiplication, and it's often confused. Uh, it's a pure multiplication problem. And certainly what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the numbers together and then the letters. Everything's a factor, though. So 6 and minus 2 are the numbers. I'm going to put the x's together, and I see x squared. I see an x. I like to go in alphabetical order, by the way. I see a y, and I see a y cubed. And last but not least, I see a z squared. What do you get over here? Well, you do some associations. For example, a 6 and minus 2 it gives you minus 12. I'm going to associate the x's together. That would be x cubed. And associate the y's together. I'm just counting the number of factors you have over here. Let's see, 1, 3 more, that's 4, and 2 more is 6. Mistakes happen. And let's take a look. We got the minus 12, x cubed. Oh, I forgot the z squared. Sorry about that. I, I thought, and I, I really do say that. I'm glad I made a mistake here because I just simply wasn't even thinking. And let me erase my answer again. And I want to go back and do it again. And this is something that should give you a reason to pause and say, i got to slow myself down and do these things right, not just sloppily do them. All right, let's do that association again. These two associate and the z squared. Now, last time I associated the z with the y's and I counted them up. But z is not a y. It's not a factor of y. So what do you get? Minus 12. Then you get x cubed. And then you get y4 and z squared. So, again, the answer is minus 12 x cubed, y4, z squared. And you check it. And if it's not right, it's not right. It's really that simple. All right, this one's a multiplication problem. A lot of students get confused by these things, but I'm going to just, you know, rewrite the problem. And for some students, they actually have to do this first. So 16x squared over 1 times minus 3 eighths. All right, now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put the numbers together, but no, you don't have to do what I'm doing. But I hope you realize that minus 3 and minus 16 when put together is simply just 3 times 16 over 8. And then we left off with x squared. I'm going to reduce this. What I mean by that, 8 goes into 8 once, it goes into 16 twice. What are you left off with? Well, let's see, 3 times 2, which is 6, 6x six squared. All right, distributive property multiplication. I'll write that out for you. It's minus 3a is distributed across those two terms. The first term would be minus 2a squared plus minus 3a times that second term. I put this in parentheses too, by the way, 5, right? What do you get over here? 6a cubed minus 15a. All right, let's keep going. This is a... Um, an exponent problem, I'll write it down for you. It's minus 5, x4, y cubed, but it's down twice. Again, students often will argue, do I need to put it down twice? No. You just need to understand what the problem says to do. Well, minus 5 times minus 5 is 25. x4 times x4 is x8. There's eight factors. And y cubed times y cubed, there's six factors. 
All right. This one says, write that number in words. And of course, we put the words down for you. But I want to read it to you. And it's 4,302,000. And seven. All right. Let's keep going. This one says translate into a variable expression. So I'm going to say, just parsing the language says 15 less, which means I got to take 15 from something. All right. So it says 15 less than twice the sum. Let me write this down. Twice the sum. That's an addition problem. So twice the sum of a number and three. Well, I'm going to say the number is n. All right. So I got it into a variable expression. I see that over here. They also asked me to simplify it. Let's write this down. 2n plus 6 minus 15. 2n, well, 6 minus 15 is going to be minus 9. All right, this one's translate. And again, I'm going to put what we're translating into a variable expression. Whoops, sorry about that. So what do you get over here? Quotient. What does that mean? It's a division problem. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. It's a division problem. That's what a quotient is. Of a number, I'll just say n and negative 4. Now granted, that does not look right to me. So what you could write down is minus n over 4, or if you prefer, put minus n over 4. These are the acceptable answers. Either the, the minus sign should be in level with the fraction bar or in the numerator. And I see answers written over here for you, all right? This is another translate problem. And again, we're translating what's in, uh, in the uh, quotation marks there. It says the difference. Well, if I were reading that, I know they're talking about a subtraction problem between twice a number and 5 is, which means it's equal to 30. So it said translate into an equation. This is an equation. We just did that. We got that part. They say solve it. How do you solve that? Add 5 to both sides you would get 35, and now divide both sides by 2. You get 35 halves. All right? I notice I also write mixed numbers down. Let's do that. 2 goes into 35 17 times. 17 times 2 is 34 with a remainder of 1, 1 half. If you want to write a decimal down, that would be 17.5. All answers are acceptable, but I do prefer 35 halves. All answers are written down for you, though. Don't think you have to write all three answers down. This one's a soft for x. My first goal here is to simplify each side. What do you get over there? 2x minus 2 equals 10. That's simplification. Now I'm going to add 2 to both sides. You get 2x is equal to 12. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals 6. If you want to check this, check it in the original or look at the answer key and make sure you got the right answer. Let's do the next one. Uh, let's take a look at this one over here. Uh, I'm going to you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe subtract 3x from both sides. And maybe subtract 9 from both sides. And what do you get? Well, minus 13 equals x. So what's x? x is minus 13. All right? Let's do this one over here. Again, I would say simplify both sides. 2x minus 2 equals minus 10. I would add 2 to both sides, and you would get minus 8. And then I would divide both sides by 2, and you would get minus 4. All right? Let's keep going. This one says solve for x. What I would do is I would multiply both sides by 20. That's what's known as the LCD. The LCD in this problem is 20. Let me write that down for you. And again, I said multiply both sides by 20, a fair and equal treatment. Well, what's nice about this, when you multiply by 20, this cancels off. And what do you left off with? You left off at minus 3x. Now, what do you get on the other side? Well, 9 times 20 is 180. And then what are you going to do? You're going to divide both sides by minus 3. What do you get? x equals minus 60. That's written over here for you. This one's decimals. And again, some students find the decimals more difficult to do. I'm going to add 2.52 to both sides. Again, I'm going to write this down inside arithmetic. Before I do that, though, I want to point out, I want to know the sign of the number first. And looking at it, it's definitely going to be a positive number. All right? So 2.52... I'm going to put a zero there. I'm going to subtract away 2.233. If you can do this in your head, please do it in your head. All right? So I'm going to borrow from the 2. That makes that a 1, and this becomes 10. 3 from 10 is 7. Now, I can't take 3 from 1, so I'm going to borrow from the 5. That
That becomes four, and this is 11. So what do I get now? I get eight. All right, let's keep going. Two from four is two, and two from two is zero. So what do I get over here? Zero point two eight seven. And yes, I know decimal arithmetic is much more difficult than integer arithmetic. I'm gonna erase my baby work. If I make a mistake, I made a mistake and I'll rectify it. All right, next thing up is I'm gonna divide both sides by 4.1, all right? So how do you do that? Well, you write it down. You write down 4.1, 4.1. Let's see if we can do that. And I'm gonna maybe cut to the chase because we've been doing this for a while now. So I'm gonna say 41, I'm moving the decimal place, and you get 2.87, all right? And so what you do over there, I multiply top and bottom by 10. Now let's take a look. What are you going to get over here? Well, 41 doesn't go into 2, and it doesn't go into 28. Here comes my tough problem. Does 41 go into 287? And I'm going to say it looks about 7 times, right? 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 4 is 28. And lo and behold, that's perfect. So what's the answer going to be? X equals 0 0.07. This answer should be staring at you. All right? this is a, um, an equation to solve. How do I solve an equation? Multiply both sides by the LCD. What's the LCD? It's 15x. Let's do that. That's 4 fifteenths times 15x equals 16 over x times 15x. What's nice about this? The reductions happen quickly. The 15 cancels and the x cancels over here. What are you left off with? Well, on the, on the left side, you left off with 4x. On the right side, we left off well, I'm just going to write down 16 times 15. So why don't you multiply it out? Well, i got to divide. And if I'm dividing, I think it's easier to divide this than to multiply it and then divide. Let's take a look what you get. And what do you get on the left side? X. On the right side, 4 goes into 4 once, and it goes into 16 4 times. Now, 4 times 15 is just 60. It's a very simple number. All right? All right. Word problem. All right? Everyone's worst nightmare. James drives for three and a quarter, three and a quarter hours at 60 miles per hour. Now, this is a distance equals rate times time problem. So what's their question? Well, how far did he drive? Well, let's write this down. Distance equals rate. His rate is 60, and that's miles per hour, by the way. It's right over here. And he drove for three and a quarter hours. I'll write that down. Now, you're more than welcome to do the arithmetic as written, or you can convert that into a... Um, an improper fraction. I'm going to do the arithmetic as written, by the way. I want to find out what I mean by that. It's 3 plus 1 quarter. And I find that rather easy to do. 60 times 3 is 180. And 1 quarter of 60 is 15. What do you get over there? 195. Now, 195 what? It's distance, and he's driving miles per hour. So 195 miles. All right? That's not bad. Let's go to the next one. A rectangle has an area of 24 square inches. Well, I'm going to draw my rectangle. And I know the area of it is 24 square inches. It says, if the length of the rectangle is 8 inches, well, this is the length. This is 8 inches. What's its width? Well, I don't know what its width is. But what I do know is area is length times width. And the area, according to them, is 24. And the length is 8. So the, what's the width? Well, the width has to be 3. 3 what? 3 inches. Let's keep going. Again, these are word problems. They're really not bad word problems, but you might find it difficult because word problems are hard to read sometimes. It says Alex has $340.56 in his checking account. If he deposits ninety two eighteen, let me write this down now. He has three forty point five six and he deposits ninety two dollars and eighteen cents. And then he writes checks. Well, if he's writing a check, he's subtracting. So he's subtracting thirty six point oh seven and he's subtracting 142.50. All right, now I realize for a lot of students, they say, I don't want to do that arithmetic. I want to take my calculator and do it. I'm not opposed to calculators, but calculators are not permitted in math uh, 086 or 092. They're permitted in math 100. The upper level course of excellence, we don't want them used there either. Uh, let's take a look. I'm going to write this down now, and I'm going to do my decimal arithmetic. I'm going to add the deposits together. So I had 340, 56, and then I gave it 92, 18. What do you get over there? Well, 8 and 6 is 14. You know, carry the 1. That's going to be 7. That's not so bad. 2. 9 and 4 is 13. Carry the 1. So he has 
and 74 cents. And then he takes away from it. What's he taking away? Two checks. Let me write this down. 142, 0 0.50, and 36.07. You get 7, 5, 8, 7, 1. So we're going to subtract away 178.57. All right. Let me get rid of my baby arithmetic. And I need to do more baby arithmetic. What do I got over here? 432. Sorry about that. 0.74. And we're going to subtract away 178.57. If you can do this in your head, please do it in your head, by the way. I'm going to borrow from the 7. This becomes 14. 7 from 14 is 7. 5 from 6 is 1. I can't take 8 from 2, so I have to borrow from the 3. Let's see. You get 4. I can't take 7 from 2, so I borrow from the 4, and that becomes 12. You get 5, and 1 from 3 is 2. So what's the balance going to be? $254.17. Look at the key. Make sure you're getting that. And if you're not, pause and say, why didn't I get that? Did I make a mistake? Did I copy wrong? Did I do something wrong? Try to correct it. If you're paid $8.75 per hour and work for 38 hours, how much have you earned before tax are taken out? Well, that's 8 dollars and 75 cents an hour times 38 hours all right now there's many ways to do it i'm not saying there's only one way to do a problem but i want to do the multiplication for you but to do the multiplication i'm going to write this a little differently i'm going to write as eight plus three quarters and that's what 8.75 is i'm going to multiply by 38. now i'm going to do eight times 38 for you and what's that going to be and that's going to be what I'm going to do something a little strange for you. I'm going to do 8 times 3 first, which is 240, and 8 times 8, which is 64. So that's going to be $304. That's the more important number, believe it or not, for me, that big number. But now i got these, the change problem. And what's the change problem going to be? Well, it's 3 quarters. Let me write this down for you. It's 3 quarters times 38. And I'm going to reduce. So 2 goes into, two, two goes into 4 twice into uh, that 17 times. And I'm going to do this over here, 3 times 17. I know it's tough, by the way. It's 30 and 21. It's 51, right? Divide by 2. And I think I can do 51 divided by 2. And what does that give me? That gives me 25.5. And I think I made a mistake somewhere. Did I make a mistake? 30, 21. I wonder where I made my mistake. Take a look at that again. And I, again, I, I, I'm glad I made a mistake. I'll tell you why. If I'm making mistakes, you guys are going to make mistakes, right? So let's see. 8 times uh, 30 is 240. And 8 times 8 is 64. So that's going to be 304. I got that right. And then I did 38 times 3 quarters. Let me put that down again. And what do you get over there? Well, let's see. I'm going to do the 2 again. Oh, I see it now. I said 17. It's 19. All right, I, I know my mistake now. And I'm glad I made a mistake, indicating no one is beyond making mistakes. So what do you get? 19 times 3. That's going to be with 30 and 27. Uh, 30 and 57 over 2. And that's going to be what? 28.5. If I add that together, what do you get? 3... 3, 2.5. And that's a money problem. All right? Okay, 12, what is, what is, I don't know, what is 12% of 60? That's how I read that. What is 12% of 60? I'm going to do some reductions for you. And as I do these things, I want to point out, you may do them slightly different, but we'll get the same result in the end. I'm going to divide by 10. That becomes 6. And this becomes 10. I'm going to divide by 2, this becomes 5, and this becomes 3. And what are you left off with? 36 over 5. And I'm going to write this as 72 over 10. I mean, crazy, right? What do you get? 7.2. All right. Let's keep going. What percent of 84 is 21? So what percent of 84 is 21? Well, I'm going to do the arithmetic for you. And what do you get over here? I'm going to you know, multiply both sides by 100. You get x times 84 equals 21 times 100. Oops. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 84. 
and you get 21 times 100 over 84. Now, what do I notice about this? 21 goes into 21 once, but it goes into 84 four times. 4 goes into 4 once, and it goes into 125 times. So what's xx is 25? What's their question now? What's the percent? The percent is 25%. Again, that's listed over here, by the way. Let's keep going. And let me just roll the window down. I know it's a little bit windy, and you might be hearing some wind noises here. All right, let's take a look. 42 is 60% of what number? Well, let me write that down as an equation. 42 is what, I'm sorry, is 60%. That means 60 over 100 of what number? Well, I'm going to reduce this one. This is 42. And what do you get over there? Well, looking at it, I'm going to say 20 goes into both of those numbers. Three times on top, five times on bottom. I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 without actually doing the multiplication. Let's write this down. 42 times 5 equals 3x. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. What do you get? 42 times 5 over 3 equals x. And let's see. Uh, 3 certainly doesn't go into 5, right? But does 3 go into 42? Well, let's see. I'm going to say 14 times. So 14 times 5 equals x. That's multiplication. And 14 times 5 is going to be 50 and 20, which is 70. So what's the number? The number is 70. All right? All right. So let's keep reading. I know this is tough for you, but we'll keep reading it. If there are 280 calories in a serving size of four cookies, so I'm going to say there's 280 calories in four cookies, then how many calories are there in one cookie? Well, let's write this down. So there's 280 calories in four cookies. Well, divide that. What do you get? 70 calories per cookie. So the answer is 70 calories, right? If the landlord increases your rent uh, of $750 by 5.6%, how much will the new rent be? Well, it's $750. That's what your rent is. And now there's an increase. And when the increase is going to be $750 times 5.6 over 100. All right? I'm going to do the arithmetic for you. It's kind of boring to watch people do arithmetic. And I always say people do arithmetic differently. I'm going to divide by 50. And what do you get over here? 750 plus, well, if I divide by 50 on bottom, you get 2, right? And if you divide 750 by 50, you're going to get 1415. All right, did I? And 15 times 5.6 now. All right. Now you said some bad arithmetic here to do, don't I? Let's write this down. It's 750. And I'm going to divide 15 by 2 now, and that's 7.5 times 5.6 now. Yeah, I got no choice but to do the arithmetic now. What do you get over here? 7.5 times 5.6. Let's take a look at it, and let's go through our multiplication, all right? 6 times 5 is 30. Uh, 6 times 7 is 42, and 3 is 45. Now I'm going to do, let me get my ratio to get rid of the carry. I'm going to do the 5 times 5, which is 25. 5 times 7 is 35, 37. And what do you get over there? 0, 10. Carry the 1. That's going to give me what? A, 12, and $42. Yeah, $42. So it's going to be 750 plus $42. And that's going to be $792. That's your new rent. Okay? So graphing calculator costs $48 is marked up to $60. Uh, what is the markup rate? And what is the selling price of the graphing calculator? So let's talk about the rate first. It's $48. And they marked it up. Some rate they marked it up by. And it's $60 now. And that's $60. And yeah, I'm going to say X is equal to... 60 divided by 48. That's the rate it's marked up, by the way. And um, let's take a look at that. I'm going to kind of divide through. I'm going to say 30 over 24. I'm dividing by 2, by the way. 15 over 12. And x is equal to, let's keep going. And I'm going to say divide by 3. That's 5 quarters. And 5 quarters is not bad. If you want to, you know, write down... A, um, let me see, 5 quarters. Yeah, it's fine. You could also write as a mixed number if you want. 1 and 1 quarter. Or if you want to write a decimal down, 1.25. All right? So 
I'm going to say, you know, we got that X now. And I, I don't mind them written down this way, but I want to be, most, most people don't write it that way. They don't write down, oh, the markup is five quarters. They don't say one and one quarter, and they don't say 1.25. What they do is they say a percent. Well, you've got to multiply those numbers by 100%. And which number is the easiest one to multiply by 100%? Probably the 1.25. And what does that give you? 125%. All right. So what is it? It's being marked up 125%. Now, of course, what's their question? A graphic calculator costs $40 marked up 60 bucks. All right. What is the uh, markup rate? We just did that. And what's the selling price? Well, the selling price is going to be $48 plus the markup. And what do they do? Well, 125% of that price, which turned out to be 60 bucks. So the selling price is $108. Right. I, I have to be honest with you, the wording for a lot of students is very complicated. All right. Oh, I think we're at the last one, which is great news. A television set regularly sells for five sixty, but it's on sale for forty percent. And it says, you know, what's the sale price of the television? Well, it's five sixty. I want to point out it's been reduced by forty percent. All right. So what does that mean? Well, one thing you could think of it is you could think of it as one minus zero point four. And what does this give you? By the way, I know this work over here as well. You might look at that work as well. It's 560 times 0 0.6. Let me go through the arithmetic for you. 560. I'm just going to multiply it by 6 now. That's what I would do in my head anyway. 0, 36, and 5 times, I'm sorry, 6 times 5 is 30, so 33. So what do you get over here? You would get 336.00, and that's in money. All right, $336. All right, that pretty much wraps it up. I do want to warn you, though, a lot of students look at this and they're frightened by it, all right? They say, you know, I, I'm in 092 now, and I, I know very little of this material that I learned in 086 I can't remember. I do want to point out, though, that at Essex County College, particularly in our beginning courses, we have tremendous overlap. And what I mean by that, when you're taking Math 086, it's really an overlap of what you've done in the grades 1 through 12, now, when you take Math 092, it's going to be a tremendous overlap of this material here. I mean, it's going to look like the same course, so to speak. Do they do new stuff? Of course they do. And then when you take Math 100, it's going to be a tremendous overlap with these things over here. Very little new material is being done in these courses, by the way. So like Math 092, you know, there is new material, but the bottom line is it's mostly a review of Math 086. Same thing for Math 100. It's mostly a review of Math 086 and 092. There is always going to be new material presented to you, though. But we tend to do a lot of repeating, all right? Now, granted, uh, as you move forward at Essex College, there's going to be less and less repetition. But that repetition pretty much lasts until you get to what's called Math 121, which is Calc 1 at Essex County College. Now, if you're planning to go to that, uh, you're expected by the time you get to Math 120 to have mastered 086, 092, 100, 119, and 120. And that's one, two, three, four, five classes. These are worth nine credits. And these over here are 12 credits. And this is what, if you can master that material, you'll have no trouble entering calculus and finishing that. All right? Now, granted, this is a large number of credits. I know that. There's 21 credits here total. That's a lot of credits, by the way. All right, you can speed the process up, by the way, by simply, um, you know, visiting your teachers and saying, you know, I would like to do self-study, and I've got a ton of websites up there for you guys to self-study. Thank you.